if I create a token, chi in this case, that is emitted proportional to the hash rate, um, that token should have a value which is tied to the price of production of the hash, which is then tied to the price of energy. Mm -hmm. So then chi becomes sort of this energy dollar in some ways. It becomes yeah. a numeraire of energy. Uh, you're not trying to peg it to something. It's just it represents sort of like a certain number of hashes. Those hashes have a certain amount of input to produce. That is what chi is, mm -hmm. right? Um, now, the problem, though, that you have is that that has only sort of created an equilibrium behavior for the miners in an equilibrium of demand environment. So if there's too right. much chi or there's too little chi, you need a mechanism to either increase the supply or decrease the supply so that the price can go back to the price point of production. Right. It's so, stock and flow. You have a perfect match on the flow side. You're only producing chi the same pace. But if demand changes, how do you take it out quickly or add it more quickly that's from right. the existing stock? That's right. Got it. That's right. So so like what the miners are doing here in this like first choice is really creating this this stickiness, this point. I, I think it is a shelling point. Yeah. I don't know if that's <laughs> yeah we've debated I, we, we, we've I think debated not, this term but yeah, fair enough go on <laughs> yeah uh, and, and anyway you've created a marketable point where the market expects the price to return to an equilibrium yeah, right. which is the price of production yeah. which is then the price of energy now the the question is then what gives you that mechanism to control the the total supply of cheese so that it's responsive to uh, changes in demand um you know changes in demand could be everyone suddenly realizes cheese this cash like thing and it has low fees perpetually and it's cooler than the dollar. So they all want to get on the energy dollar and maybe a nation state adopts it as their national currency or Coinbase lists it or something like that. Yeah. Then there's going to be sort of like a stepwise shock to right. demand up, right? Uh, and then the supply of chi will need to increase so that its value, again, is still reflecting uh, energy prices. Uh, conversely, maybe a country decides to ban the use of chi in its jurisdiction, right. which would be a, a negative shock, and mm -hmm. you need to be able to soak supply out of the market. So the idea with the second token, Kwai, which is more of a traditional deflationary token, um, whose issuance is proportional to the logarithm of hash, it's not proportional to hash, but logarithm of hash, mm -hmm. um, that sets it up to be deflationary over time. So its curve sort of uh, logarithmically approaches like a, a finite value right. over time. Um, the you can use that to sort of counterbalance chi effectively. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kwai, because it's deflationary, you should think of it kind of as a store of value. It's going to be quite a bit more volatile. Uh, but what it can do is you can create a system wherein you can trade Kwai for chi or chi right. for Kwai. And in doing that, you've created a market mechanism that provides issuance and it provides uh, destruction of chi such that uh, chi can always have the right amount of supply in the market. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that that's done is really sort of the, the it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting and somewhat beautiful design. Um, we set up an endogenous exchange rate and the controller for the exchange rate in the protocol. Exchange rate for, for what? what quite do you a chi and chi to quiet. Got it, got it. So there's a native rate in the protocol that's always being calculated. Um, and what the controller is doing is it's trying to make it so that the market is neutral to the exchange rate. So if the if the market is uh, neutral to the protocol offered exchange rate, it means that the protocol offered exchange rate has matched the market rate. Mm -hmm. So it is like the correct pricing. If I went to the exchanges and said like, how much can I buy a Kwai for? How much can I buy a Chi for? How many Chi per Kwai is there? When the preference endogenously in the protocol is matching the market, like that endogenous rate will be the market rate. Mm -hmm. Because if it was high, people then preference trading Chi for Kwai or Kwai for Chi, uh, which would then move the exchange rate, right? It would also adjust the supply um, until the offer rate comes into line with the market rate. Um, and it does that simply by balancing preference. So obviously you can measure how much Chi was mined, how much Kwai was mined, how much Chi was exchanged for Kwai and how much Kwai was exchanged for Chi. And then all the controller has to do is try to get that to be equal. 